Extinction of a species means the point of no return. But what if I told you that some scientists claim that they could bring back the lost? The molecule we focus on today is DNA, the genetic code that carries the information of how all living organisms look and function. With only four different letters or bases, the DNA code for everything in an organism, from scales or fur, to height and shoe size. This is the time of renewal. People have fantasized for ages about bringing back extinct animals to present day through the DNA found in remains of long lost animals. And with today's knowledge and technology, this fantasy could actually be possible. We are meeting with Professor Steven Schuster, who in 2009 was named one of the world's top 100 most influential people. And this because of his work on the Mammoth Genome Project. This research project managed to sequence 85% of the woolly mammoth genome, which made some people believe that we could in a potentially near future see the return of the mammoths. People are very excited about the idea that an extinct species could eventually be resurrected. This is like Jurassic Park in modern times. In 2005, there was a technological revolution that allowed to sequence DNA very fast and very, very cheaply. And this allowed us for the first time to look at samples that had almost no DNA content. The thing is, in DNA sequencing, you figure out the order of the four bases in a sample, but you need to find cells that have intact DNA. Mammoths are hairy, but hair without the hair follicles are not enough for sequencing. Well, not until now. Schuster and his team has found a way to extract DNA from strands of hair, instead of using hair follicles or bones. And by doing this, they obtain a much more pure and intact DNA, meaning that the mammoth DNA isn't contaminated by other DNA, and that it isn't degraded as much. New technology had also made it possible to sequence millions and billions of DNA molecules at the same time, something that before had taken a ridiculous amount of time. But working with ancient DNA requires a fair amount of patience to begin with. Whoever tried to work with ancient DNA knows that it is completely shattered. The only way you can do it is that you sequence the individual pieces and then you put the puzzle back in the computer. But as we speak, there is no print button that says, go print this extinct species for me. And then you have a little elephant walking away from the computer. We don't do this right now. Okay, so rebuilding a mammoth from scratch might not be that simple after all. And some of you might say, why spend so much time trying to bring back something that's already gone extinct when we have so many threatened species we could help instead? Well, these fast DNA sequencing techniques are also used in endangered species preservation. And now Professor Schuster is working here in Singapore. And even if the biodiversity here is high, mammoths were never a part of it. Instead, he's using the techniques to map out the genetic diversity of microbe communities, which involves discovering a lot of previously unknown species of microbes, knowledge that will help him, for example, the fight for clean water and a global sustainable future. All right, let's take a quick break here and go back to the mammoths. I know there are probably some people out there saying, we were promised we could maybe see live mammoths in the near future. This is for you. We will have very soon technology that we could mimothify an Indian elephant by implementing all those differences from the mammoth back into the Indian elephant genome. But this, of course, would not give you exactly what the mammoth was, but very likely it would result in an animal that will have hair, it will have different uh, limb length, it will have the curvy tusks, and it still is a mammothified Indian elephant, but it's not a mammoth. Well, mammoth or not, these improved sequencing techniques give us invaluable information about all organisms. Not just extinct and species living today, but also new, undiscovered species. And this information is coded by only four bases in our DNA molecules. If you like what we're doing here at Unteam Science, subscribe to our channel for new videos every week. And if you have a cool project that you think we could collaborate on, send us an email. 